So friends, uh, yesterday I gave a lecture in Nairobi regarding recent advances for fertility patients having endometriosis and adenoviruses. In today's session, I will be sharing the key points of that lecture so that people who missed out on that lecture because of the time zone difference can benefit out of the same. So the first point which we discussed was now it has been proven without any doubt that if in case you are having any form of deep endometriosis, that means the presence of any nodule either in the colonic system or in the urological system, that means uretric endometriosis, parametrial endometriosis, bowel endometriosis, low bowel endometriosis, sigmoid endometriosis, pararectal endometriosis or lateral pelvic wall endometriosis. In all these situations, when you excise this nodule out, that means when you remove this nodule out and simultaneously you do a great work as far as preservation of the ovary is concerned. So in order for you to preserve these ovaries, you need somebody who is a highly skilled surgeon to operate upon you. And if the anatomy of the fallopian tube is also nicely preserved as a part of your surgery, then you as a patient, just by removing this nodule, will experience a great benefit in fertility. You will have a high chance of conceiving naturally. You will have a high chance of conceiving with IUI the minute deep endometriosis has been taken out from your system. The second important thing which we discussed was the important topic of doing ethanol sclerotherapy. Right now, we understand one thing that ethanol sclerotherapy is a technically challenging procedure. We have reserved this procedure for patients in whom AMH is less than 1.5, trying for fertility, very important. How do you do ethanol sclerotherapy? So this is a sclerotherapy which is always done under laparoscopy guidance. You should not be doing it transvaginally. That means the needle should not be passing through the vagina. No. It should be done under laparoscopy guidance. How do you do it? After the adhesiolysis is done, you pass a large bore ovum pickup 18 gauge needle inside the cyst. When you do that, you can aspirate the chocolate content out. So what will happen when you aspirate the chocolate content? The cyst would crumple and the crumpled cyst would look something like this. When a crumpled cyst after everything aspirated looks something like this, you put approximately 10 ml of hyalase inside this. When you put hyalase inside this, allow hyalase to be inside for 5 to 7 minutes and aspirate it out. After you have aspirated out the hyalase, you put, you put alcohol, alcohol inside, alcohol this, inside this. Once you, you put alcohol inside the cyst, you allow for a chemical ablation time of approximately 25 to 30 minutes for this alcohol. In that window of 25 to 30 minutes, basically you are supposed to do nothing, just allow ablation to occur. After it has ablated, aspirate the alcohol out. And when you aspirate the alcohol out in the cyst, you will be watching a very, very dark hypoechoic line which would have developed. It is this line which has caused the cyst to get adherent to each other. This is an ovary which you can immediately stimulate in the next month. This should be reserved for patients who are undergoing any form of fertility procedures. You cannot be using this therapy for anything else. The third important update which we gave was about anabolics, which is an oral antagonist available in India. Remember, it is simply an oral antagonist. 200 mg twice a day, maximum window six months. The only function it has, it is allows to have pain relief in endometriosis. Nothing else. It does not cure endometriosis. It is associated with some severe side effects, lot of hair falls, irreversible osteoporosis to the patient, and you need to inform the patient about these two things before you make any false promises because the manufacturer is very clear about it. We as medical practitioners should not bombard our patients with negative or false information when this drug has a very limited use. The fourth important update which we gave was about treatment of adenomyosis. Now, treatment of adenomyosis can be done very beautifully for fertility patients 
with the help of something called as microwave ablation probe. Now, guys, remember one thing. Microwave ablation is no longer experimental. We have had our first large data from India, which is by far the largest data of the country, which has been approved for publication. In this situation, we have proven that microwave ablation when done correctly for adenomyosis allows for adenomyotic tissue to get lysed and then get absorbed. This allows the patient to have approximately 35 to 40 percent volume reduction over the next three to four months. It is protective to the endometrium and protective to the serosa, so it has an excellent fertility benefit. And this can be used when used effectively after doing mapping of adenomyosis. The problem is majority of the people don't map it. Simultaneously, this can be used transvaginally as well as laparoscopically, but we recommend the laparoscopic approach when you want to treat adenomyosis because you need to do adhesiolysis. Adhesiolysis is the most important thing in microwave ablation. You have a specific ablator time which is available based on your expertise and patients in whom this therapy is done nicely will have a massive benefit as far as fertility outcomes for the patient are concerned. So friends, these were the four important updates I gave yesterday night in Nairobi in Kenya. I personally think that apart from this, one has to do an individualized mapping individualized case selection and then decipher which therapy will work the best on which particular patient. I also wanted to give a brief discussion about the role of ICG as far as endometriosis is concerned and I will take one session purely dedicated to ICG in the subsequent sessions.